There's one right there. Uh, not a bad fish either. Uh, oh yeah, nice bass. Nice bass. Come here, buddy. Oh, oh, jeepers. Oh, baby. Oh, I'm weak in the knees. Oh. Folks, that was a big bass. Oh. Hey gang, welcome to the fishing scene. I'm Dick Beardsley and my heart rate is going 150 miles an hour. Man, folks, that was a big fish. We're uh, late May, early season bass fishing, and uh, holy cow, that, uh, that was a big fish. What we're doing here, folks, is we're pitching three inch tubes on a 16th ounce jig up into the rocks off this point here. It drops off real quickly. And uh, now most of the time, this time of the season, you'd find those bass say out in, oh, or up in that shallow water where it's nice and warm. But we've had a lot of cold weather the last few weeks. And there's some bass up in the shallows, but main, the main bigger bass are sitting out in deeper water or just on the edge, just like that big mama was there. Oh, that was a that was a dandy. And what we're doing is we're pitching these. Oh, I got snagged up there. Uh, we're pitching these. This got snagged up in a rock. I'll have to go in and get it. We're pitching these jigs, like I said, up on these. There, I got her. Up on these uh, edge of this gravel point letting them sit and then just working that that tube jig back real slow and this point is kind of neat because on this side over here where I just pitched it's kind of got a tapering side to it where it kind of falls off a little more gradual where you get out in front of it and boy it drops off right away I mean you can have one length of your boat can be in you know a couple foot of water and the other end can be out in 14 16 foot and the key though with this cold water is to really work that bait slow and now in the summertime when you're doing this kind of fishing a lot of times those bass will just thump that jig big time. But here, they're not really thumping it. All of a sudden, I get the boat turned. All of a sudden what they'll do is they'll just kind of inhale that bait and you'll just feel like your bait is almost hung up on a weed. So sometimes what I'll do is if I'm not quite sure, I'll kind of give a little pressure and that bass will maybe turn its head a little bit and then I'll know it's a fish. Or what I'll do is Sometimes you won't even feel them bite, you'll just see the, the, uh, your line start to move. Then you know you've got a fish that sucked that in. Oh, that one was a dandy. Let's see if we can't get another one going here. But early in the season, especially when they're, you're fishing out and those fish aren't real schooled up real tight or up in that shallow water area, you know, what you kind of want to do is kind of run and gun, work an area a little bit. You might catch one or two fish off of a particular spot, and then you got to move again. When we come back, there's more bass action. There's one. Come here, buddy. Right off the end of that boat dock. Come on. Come on. There we go. 
gone. Hey, folks, right, right off the end of that boat dock. Now, that boat dock actually is in pretty deep water. It drops off real quick. Now, what we're doing here now, too, is we've moved around a little bit. And what we're doing now, we're fishing a point where the wind is actually blowing into. And we're really starting to get bit pretty good over here because of that. So um, that's why we came over here. There's not a lot of wind blowing in here, but there's just enough to where, you know, might be blowing some minnows or some bait fish up into this area. And so the bite's, you know, pretty decent up in this area. Our conditions right now, we've got a northwest wind at about, oh, eight to 10 miles per hour. Our water temperature is 55 degrees, air temperature about 50, and water clarity, well, it's kind of murky today. We've had some heavy rains over the last few days, and with a little bit of wind, it's not as clear as this lake usually is. And what we're doing is just flipping these, these baits off the edge of this deep drop off here. There's one right there. There's one right there. Just flipping them off the edge of those deep drop offs and just working them real slow. Not a very big bass, but like I said before, normally the bass this time of the year are gonna be up in the real shallow water, but because of the, of the cold conditions we've had over the last couple of weeks, they're sitting out in a little bit deeper water. But you know what? They're still fun to catch. And these kind of locations, you can find these locations on just about any lake that you fish. Boat docks, of course, are always real good areas to fish in the summertime, especially because a lot of them are sitting in shallow water and they offer some shade. Now these boat docks on this particular body of water, actually at the end of those boat docks, it drops off into some really deep water. So these are good areas all year long. Oh, this spells bass, I can tell it. There's one. Come here, buddy, not a very real big one, but it's a pretty good one. Oh yeah, ooh, come right up out of the water. Oh yeah, nice, nice fish, nicer than I thought. Come on, buddy, come here, buddy. Come here, come here. There we go. All right. Boy, I tell you what, folks. Oh, that's a female. Look at her belly on her. That one there, she engulfed that one. Boy, nice fish. We'll get her back in the water. What we're using, folks, what I've got on is a 16th, or no, excuse, yeah, 16th ounce Max Gap, Lindy Max Gap jig. Now, I'm going to show you something here. When they call that a Max, uh, a Max Gap jig, is because from the point of the hook to the eye of the hook, it's got a big gap in there. And what that does is it makes for a better chance to hook that fish, especially with a largemouth bass. A big mouth, they'll suck that in. They can spit it out before you know it. So that, that extra wide gap in there really can make a difference. And then we're just using a small three inch plastic tube, pitching along the edge of the weeds. There's a fish right there. There's one. Yeah, come here, buddy. That's a good one, too. Come on. Come on. Boy, I'll tell you what, folks. You know, to me, bass fishing is such a, such a fun, fun species to fish for. Come here, buddy. Not a big fish, but I'll tell you what, fun to catch. And that one inhaled it pretty good, too. Um, you know, they kind of take second fiddle to the uh, walleyes here in Minnesota. But I'll tell you what, when you look at it over the entire country, it's the most sought after game fish there is, is largemouth bass. More early season bass fishing when we come back. Don't go away. Fish too. Nice fish. 
Oh, he's running with it. Come on, buddy. Come on. He's right underneath the boat here now. That's a good fish, though. Now he's coming out. There he's coming up. Oh, this is a nice fish, folks. This is a dandy. Oh, baby. This is a brute. This is a brute. Oh, yeah, boy. There's a nice fish. Come here, buddy. Oh, she's not hooked too good either. She's not. There we go. Oh, that's a dandy, huh? Nice fish. Nice fish, huh, folks? Nice Minnesota largemouth bass. Full of eggs. Get her back in the water. There you go, girl. No harm done. Now, this is early, early in the season. And normally, as I said earlier, those fish are going to be in a lot shallower water. But because of the cold weather we've had, they, uh, they, they seem to be sitting out uh, in, in that first break where it starts going off into deeper water. And they're not really, you know, thumping the bait. All of a sudden, your line will just kind of stop. Or it'll move. And when you see that move, that's when you want to tighten up Tighten up your line, and then uh, give it a good hard hook set. There's one right here holding on. There's one. Come here, buddy. A little, oh, he was just a little guy. He was just a little guy. Oh, yeah, folks, I tell you, if I seem to get excited, I get excited about all kinds of fishing, but especially bass fishing, because um, all of a sudden, it's kind of like hunting behind a pointer dog. You know when you're pheasant hunting there and all of a sudden that dog goes on point and you know that there's going to be a bird getting up? It's kind of that same way when you're bass fishing. All of a sudden you'll feel your line kind of tighten up a little bit and you know there's a fish there. Like right now. There's one. Oh, we're on him here. Oh, that feels like a little better one. That feels like a little better one. No, oh, come on. Come on, buddy. Oh, yeah, this feels like a, this is a nicer fish. Oh, yeah, this is a nice fish, folks. This is a dandy. I'm telling you. Come on. Oh, yeah, nice fish. Nice fish. She's just barely hooked by the lip. You got to keep that line tight just like that. Ah, nice fish. Oh, man. I got to get the boat out. We're going right in on top of where they were. Like I said, it's like behind a pointer dog. Just like that one there, all of a sudden I could feel that line get a little bit tight. I knew there was a fish there. Then it's just a matter of if you, you know, dropping that jig a little bit, give her time to get it in her mouth a little, and then just really whacking that hook, giving it a good hard hook set. Oh, okay. Let's get back out in there. Let's see if we can get another one to cooperate. What we're working here, just as edge of a weed line, it's an emerging weed line that it's uh, on the back side of it, it drops off, or it's, it's very shallow. Then on the outside edge of it, it drops into deep water. Now normally those fish will be up there on that inside edge, but today, because of the conditions and how it's been over the last little bit, they're, uh, they're up on the, uh, they're on the outside edge instead. There's one. Come here, buddy. Come here. Little guy. Fun to catch, though, I'll tell you that. <laughs> little guy, and you know what, folks? The little guys get big. And you know, that's the thing I want to mention is that with largemouth bass fishing, it really is important to, to put those fish back. You know, they're, they're such a great, fun fish to catch, and they're really, as far as for table fare, they're not all that good to eat compared to like crappies, sunfish, walleyes, uh, even northern pike I prefer over bass. I mean, I've eaten them before, but they're the kind of fish that, especially here in nor northern Minnesota, that they can provide so much fun and entertainment for you that, boy, you know, catch them, put them back, you know, take a picture if you get a big one and, and uh, let them be for another day where you can catch them again or somebody else will come by and, and have a thrill too. Still to come on the fishing scene. Buddy. 
little bath. Come on, pal. There we go. Oh, golly. I got him down there. My pliers. He's bleeding a little bit here. I don't think he's hooked real bad, but. He'll be okay. He showed a little blood there. It is, it got in the gill plate there a little bit and there's a lot of veins and stuff in there and it just clipped him a little bit. He'll be fine. Cut that jig off and uh, let him go. Don't start digging out a 25, 40, 50 cent jig to try to save that jig because you're ending up gonna probably kill the fish. So snap it, snap it off of there and get the fish back in the water. She'll be just fine. <clears throat> Come here, buddy. Always getting on around the trolling motor there. There you go. A little, not too big, but got wrapped up around that trolling motor a little bit there. We're kind of way the wind is blowing us. I had to switch uh, jigs after that last one there, so I went with a little 16th ounce little nipper jig with a little pink hair on it in that tube. And that one hit her pretty good. We get her flip back out there. What we're doing here, folks, we're drifting down the side of a bar now, and it's real shallow up on top. We're kind of along that edge, outside edge, beginning of the emerging weeds in about eight foot of water. And then what happens is we'll get down into this area here, and there's a little inside turn, and then it comes back up at our side of this bay, and it drops off real quick. So we're gonna work this area in through here. And, and a lot of times those fish, once we get up into this bay, they move up into that bay, it's real sandy up in there, and they'll spawn up in there. So what I'm thinking is they might be out in that first break, and uh, because of the colder temperatures, we'll see if we can't get some out there. Oh, there's one. Right along the edge of that outside edge, weed edge, folks. Oh, this feels like a good fish, too. Feels like a good fish. Come on, buddy, I can see her in the water there. Oh yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Look at, she's got 20 markings on her. Don't get down her. Come here, buddy. Oh, come here. Holy cow. Well, that, is, that is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. It's crazy. You know what, folks? I'm gonna uh, cut this. Because she got her down there. We don't want to dig her. And that's how you hurt the fish. Come on, there we go. Clip it as close as you can, get her back in the water. There we go. Come on, buddy. Kind of got it underneath the boat there. Come here, pal. Where are you? I'm dogging down. There he comes. Oh, not a nice, not a bad little bath. Yeah. Come here, buddy. Fat one full of eggs. What we're doing here now, folks, is we got on on that inside turn, uh, came out, and now we're working along this brake line in the shallow bay where it gets real shallow in there and then we're out along the deep edge and that's where we're getting those fish. Well, folks, hey, early season bass fishing, if they're not up shallow where they normally are, hey, check out a little bit deeper and you're gonna catch some nice bass just like we did today. And please remember to practice selective harvesting. By doing so, we'll continue to have great fishing for years to come. For my camera gal, Raina Benson, I'm Dick Beardsley. I'll see you out here on the water.